Welcome to Dance with Disease. My name is Ren. In 2016, my index finger started wiggling, which is great if you're training a dog, but I don't have a canine companion. And then the word Parkinson's came into my life. I knew from the beginning that this was not the downward spiral of doom as guaranteed by the brochures, but a kick in the ass to look at my life and change. This podcast is dedicated to sharing my magical journey of healing through trying every alternative therapy imaginable. Thanks for joining me. Let's dance. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I had a glorious sleep. Glorious is in almost as glorious as Gloria Esteban. Really, really good. I'm listening to a DreamWorks Summit right now. Different dream professionals, dream experts from per- Peruvian indigenous folks to scientific PhD types. And I've always felt that dreams were a factor. There's certainly a window in the subconscious mind, but some talk about this one guy was talking about it as precognition as well. That when you when you consider that time is not linear, that the dream state is in is a window into the future. That's interesting. It's 6.05, April 27th.
power of the mind. Stay hopeful. Staying hopeful, staying positive, not taking in the not taking in the negative is the biggest challenge of this journey. By a long shot. Yeah. I'm this this summit that I'm listening to right now, the DreamWorks summit, these different dream experts from different parts of the world, different cultures, different approaches. I've always felt that they, the dream, my dream world is uh, there's something to it and that the documenting your dreams man, listen to these different people to speak on dreams and taking dreams more seriously. I've been you know, keeping track of dreams for quite some time. For the last several years, on and off, I'm going to take it more seriously now, but details are hard to remember. The last thing was just filled with dreams. Like Jock O. Block and uh, dreams of being a part of a team, a leader of a group of friends. Yeah, quite often, uh, groups of people are part of my dream. Um, actually, it's interesting. The, the, the movie The Peaceful Warrior, if you haven't seen it and you're interested in inspiring films, it's a great film. And in the film, Nick Nolte is awesome, by the way. In the film, the protagonist and author, Dan Millman, is an Olympic level gymnast. And, uh, you know, life was going really, really good for him. Everything is on track. Living a life of privilege. And he has a self-destructive way to A um, serious motorcycle accident shattered his leg, told him he was never going to walk again, let alone get on gymnastics, no support from that world, from his coach, everyone thought he was done. And in that time period he meets a spiritual, a guru or a guide if you will, in the, in the form of Nick Nolte, and is introduced to other ways of being which he has incredible resistance to, and that I really relate to. I felt like my career was on track as well, but I also felt like there was a, before this happened, I felt like there was also a ceiling that I could see in terms of the path that I'd chosen. Um, so I was just started pushing harder and harder and harder. And um, so then when Dan Millman gets to the point where he is about to just, he wanted to, he was accepted where he, you know, he was never going to compete again. He was going to just dedicate his life to, life to service. Nick Nolte, his, his teacher, says, compete, you love it. Get back in the ring. There's, once again, resistance. But he's, I can't remember the phrase, a warrior does what he loves for the love of it. And so, I had I stepped away from cycling for the last couple of years and I just started reintroducing it back into my life again. I love it. So I've also applied for to why well, I've, I've started to connect to the cycling world here and in connecting with cycling people I realized that yeah it's it's been a, a source of inspiration for me and I really enjoy cycling. The, the, 
I cycled my longest ride in a long time, 26 kilometers, kilometers which is sort of, in, I have a bit of shame and embarrassment around that. Because, you know, I used to cycle 275 kilometers. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. And um, Farah, my wife, is saying I should cycle to Salt Spring in a month to meet her and at a retreat she's teaching. And initially I'm like, oh, I can't do it. And I'm like, maybe I can. I guess the, the difference is it's on a fixed gear. So you earn every kilometer. And, but I have a month to train. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to say yes to life. And since I've been saying yes to life, more life has been saying yes to me. Thank you for listening to the Dance with Disease podcast. My name is Ren. It's been a pleasure to have you here today. For more podcasts and the films, Dance with Disease, log on to YouTube, Ren the Artist. See you next time.